welcome to tonight's episode of Life Support. The only lifestyle show with the team with the talent to teach you the tricks you need to know. To help make your life just that little bit better. That's right. How's it? Dr. Rudy, huh? Keen to continue my crusade towards a more tolerable tomorrow for everyone. Yeah, g'day. I'm Todd. And if you're out there trying to do it yourself, let me lend a hand with Todd's tips. I'm Sigourney, and as a modern woman, I feel it's my duty to lead the battle of the sexes down the road to peace by teaching one side how to surrender. I'm Penny, and if you want to learn anything that's actually useful, then listen to me. Tonight, I'll be showcasing some survival skills for single mums. I'll be letting you in on a cool way to keep cool on those hot summer nights. I'll be showing you how to fashion a fabulous fresh friendship that doesn't clash with today's style. And I'll be advising all you committed corporate men on how to beat those uppity women to the top job. Well, that certainly sounds like a decent load to deliver tonight. Do you think we'll have time to fit it all in? Well, if we just sit around chatting about it, then no, probably not. That's right, Penny. So why don't we get started? Oh, Ni Hao. I love Chinese food. when I can get it. But I swear I'd starve to death if I had to use chopsticks. I suppose I could ask for cutlery, but I don't want to look unsophisticated in front of my lady friend. So, I've got an idea. I'm gonna take a couple of these chopsticks back to my shed to see if I can customise them. Okay, now, I've got a chopstick held tight in the vise here. Now, I'm gonna sharpen one end. Beautiful. That's exactly what we want. Now, I'm going to knock up two more the same. Perfect. Now, for a drop of glue. Are you right with chopsticks? I certainly am. Now, that's a chopstick I can work with. Bon appetit. Mmm. That tastes tops. Fresh shiitake mushrooms in the shumai. Yeah, right. Single mums need fun too. But a first date with a guy is not going to go very far when he spots a rug rat. So young mums, if you want to get laid, I'll show you what you need. Grab yourself some leftover carpet. I find shag pile works best. A few felt off cuts, a hot glue gun, some scissors and a sewing machine. This, a leash and there you have it. Single men aren't too keen on kids but they love dogs. It might be a good idea to get him a little pissed too, so he doesn't notice when the dog answers back. And there you have it. All the fun you deserve while still being a responsible parent. See ya. Good boy. As a modern woman, it's important to know what turns a man on if you're thinking of making him a longer term project. Well, I'm going to show you a little trick that'll let you in on your new man's sexual fantasies without you having to ask him. All you need is one of these erotic videos. Something with a variety of performances. Guys and girls, girls and girls, girls and guns, leather, plastic, rubber. Just as long as it has a variety of options. Now, the trick is to leave it somewhere where it may seem like you're trying to hide it, but you know he'll find it. It shouldn't be too hard. Men have an instinct for finding pornography. Then make an excuse to leave the house, like lunch or shopping with the girls. Bye, darling. I'll be back after lunch. Now, being new to the relationship, your man will want to look around a bit to try and find out more about how you think and what you're into. That's when he will get the pleasant surprise of finding an erotic video. Then, next time you're alone, get the video from its hiding place and put it on. Men are always too lazy to rewind, so wherever the video is stopped is where he's climaxed. You can now tell exactly what it takes to keep him coming back for more. And that's all there is to it. Triple X marks the spot. It's the easy way of finding out without the awkwardness of asking him. Oh, Jean-Paul, you naughty boy.
You know that I watch? No. <laughs> I don't know what men think, but when he's around me, I don't think he does watch it. And I have pornography to be watched on, to seen on the internet. He doesn't. He doesn't have access to the internet, so. So turn off them, you know. The guy yak, you know. Is that all you guys get up to? The, the normal ones. He's got a few of those, you know, little X-rated videos, but he's more of a magazine kind of guy. I've recently turfed probably about uh, 24 penthouse magazines that I've had that I've probably had for about six or seven years. Uh, um, not really that interested. How's it? Dr. Uriya with more advice for all you men out there. So, you've finally been asked to apply for a promotion. And word is, you're in with a good chance. The only trouble is, with equal opportunity so popular these days, it's likely your strongest competitor is a woman. Not to worry. There is a great way to turn that into an advantage. During the application period, you need to change the way your boss perceives your politically correct competitor by making him question her commitment to her career. Start by buying her a good luck present. I suggest an Anne Geddes calendar, but a soft toy will also suffice. Just make sure you give it to her in an open area when the boss is also present. Next, place an empty pregnancy test packet in the bin your boss is most likely to use. If nothing else, this will place the question of her reliability in the front of his mind. If there is a notice board, instead of equal opportunity pamphlets, why not start a petition lobbying the company to grant paid maternity leave for its staff? This will be popular with almost all passers-by. If your rival's desk is easily accessible and can be seen by passers-by, try placing a handful of catalogues for maternity wear and baby products on her unmanned desk. And finally, try and manage to mention as often as you can that your rival was feeling a bit sick this morning but managed to pull through again. This will make you appear concerned, but more importantly will set tons wagging and be sure to get back to the boss. So there it is, a cutthroat campaign of clues that will make sure the boss bypasses the politically correct option and will set you on your rightful course to climb the corporate ladder. Bye now. Wonderful idea, Dr. Rudy. Not only does the promotion build self-esteem in the man, but a woman of any age always appreciates being reminded that her biological clock is ticking away. Yes, well, it's all well and good for women to prove they can do a job just as well as a man, but they can so easily lose focus on what they should be doing. Like having babies. Well, as you can see, the mailbag is here, and, well, so is another letter from the mysterious woman who contacted us last week. Probably just some fraudulent pranks that trying to rile me up. You know someone playing at a copycat caper. No, look, Dr Rudy, the same floral-boarded paper, and we didn't show it to the viewers last week, so it must be the same woman. Well, what has she got to say now? Hi, gang. Love the show. Why, thank you, Anonymous. Gets better and better, and so on, etc., etc. Ah, here it is. Dr Rudy. I'm disappointed you haven't made contact, especially considering you know the consequences of the photograph in question. If I don't hear from you soon, I'll be forced to post it on your oh-so-cool new website. The website? Yes. And you can find our website on www. Oh, no, so Connie, please. I don't think our audience are propellers. They won't be interested. Oh, you poor thing. This has really shaken you up, hasn't it? Yes. Quite frankly, it has. Oh, some women are just plain trouble. But don't worry, Dr. Rudy. You can rely on me for comfort during this sensitive time. And for now, you can rely on this next piece of advice all the time. Yeah, g'day. Don't you hate summer nights that get too hot? No matter how few clothes you've got on, it's still impossible to get to sleep. I use a trick I suppose most of you know already. At regular intervals, I turn my pillow over, finding the other side is usually cooler. It works for a little while, doesn't it? Until you turn it over and the other side is still warm from the last time. So now you've got both sides warm and nowhere cool to lay your head. Well, today, Todd's going to show you how to make a special pillow that will stay cool for twice as long. The thing with a pillow is, is that it's only got two sides. So what I've made here is a four-sided pillow. See, with four sides rotating, you can get twice the coolness because the warm side has much more time to cool down. 
And by the time you come back to it, the original side has had three times the normal cool down period. So let's test it out. Once it gets hot, I'll just rotate. Oh, nice and cool again. Oh, starting to get warm. Oh, beautiful. And just in case I drool a bit and get this side wet, I'll rotate again. Oh, and there you have it. Another top tip from Todd. With four sides to choose from, you'll never be left without a cool side ever again. There are many problems associated with drugs. One of the most obvious is that it's very difficult to carry about the necessary paraphernalia without the risk of parental interference, a hefty fine, or in some states, even arrest. So, tonight, I'm going to show you how to carry with confidence. This is liquid latex. It dries to form a soft, flexible rubber. So, simply coat the offending article in a few layers. Shaping it as you go, to then form the final product to look like this. And there you have it. No one's going to want to inspect this too closely. Oh, and remember to make a small cut at the base so you can peel away the latex when necessary, like so. In fact, by making the offending item large, you're instantly giving any male prying eye an inferiority complex. So they'll terminate any further investigations pronto. By the way, you don't have to be a chick to employ this kind of subterfuge. I bet there are very few male cops in this country who'd be willing to touch something they think's been up another man's bum. See ya. Now that the SARS epidemic is over, Asian culture is back and it's hipper than ever. If you're like me, you love Asian food, films and fashion and enjoyed reading memoirs of a geisha, or at least own it. But there is one ultimate Asian fashion accessory you may not yet have, an Asian friend. Asian friends are great. They can open a world of new cultural experiences for you. Also, they're generally petite like you, so they won't get as angry as your fat Western friends when you can fit into small sizes. There is, however, one problem. Hi, Ling, you'll never guess what happened to Bruno last night. Hey, Over here! <laughs> Finding your Asian friend in a crowd of other Asians is nearly impossible. But don't fret, there is a solution. Just make your little Far Eastern buddy one of these. You can make your neck piece in any colour. Just make sure it's bright so you can find your friend in a crowd. I've also fitted mine with some bells so I can find my little crouching tiger if we get separated in the streets of Chinatown. Jeez, thanks Sigourney. Oh Ling, you're so welcome. <laughs> hey, you want to go get some yum choy? It's yum cha. Oh, whatever, as long as it's yummy. <gasps> Isn't she cute? That's what I used to think. But I went to Korea, I opened a restaurant in Korea and you can actually dis distinguish them. Like the f uh, eye features, the, yeah, you can actually tell the difference from a Japanese, Chinese, Vietnamese, you can. It, in Australia, we, uh, you tend to think they all look the same, but no, when you go over there, you, into those various countries, they all, all look different. Well, Sigourney, it's nice to finally have a chat with you. Sorry? Well, it's the first time we've had a little one-on-one -on -one this year. I've been missing our interlude. <laughs> oh, no, it's nice, Todd. I've missed them too. Oh, good. Well, now it's time for some more sound advice from our favourite lifestylers. How's it, parents? Dr. Rudy here. Look at this. What an absolute disgrace. Most teenagers are absolute slobs and lazy as well, leaving you women with mountains of monotonous household chores like the laundry. But if you're the mother of a teenage girl, there is a way to get her to do her own washing all the time. All you have to do is order one of these kits from the internet. It's called Teen Screen 
and it's used by Brian parents to detect if their teenage daughters are sexually active. It does this by identifying traces of dried semen on her underwear, bed linen or other clothes. A little enzyme sensitive fluid followed by a brief rub with blotting paper and then a purple stain will reveal any presence of pearl jam. So simply take this kit and leave it in the top of your wardrobe, somewhere where you know it will be discovered by your daughter. After just seeing this, she'll take responsibility for her own washing from now on. So there you have it, mums. Lessen your laundry load by pretending to secretly search for semen. Bye now. Now I know I parked around here somewhere. Look at the size of this car park and look at all these cars. This is a very common thing that happens to us modern women. Because when we park our cars, we're not thinking about leaving, we're thinking about shopping. So today, I'm going to show you a way to eliminate this problem forever. Now, men have a natural instinct for cars that we girls don't have. It means they can locate theirs amongst thousands of others. What we girls do have, however, is a natural female instinct for spotting a sale. Now, where's the car? Oh, look! There's a 50% off shoe sale in the car park. Oh, hey, wait a minute. That's my car. And there you have it. Next time you park, just leave one of these on the windscreen. This simple 50% off sign means I've found my car in half the time. Well, Penny, it's nice to finally have a chat with you. Sorry? Well, it's the first time we've had a little one-on-one -on -one this year. Been missing our interludes. Yeah? Yeah. As colleagues, I find we always communicate well on a close, personal level. Yeah, anyway, so what about Dr Rudy and this mysterious woman? Oh, I don't want to talk about that. Yeah, all right. How come? <sighs> oh. Well, it just seems like ever since we've been back on air, all we ever talk about is Dr Rudick. First it was his face, now it's this mysterious woman. <laughs> He's hogging the screen time. Big time. Yeah, but this letter business isn't his fault, though. Are you sure? How do you know he didn't write that letter to himself? Why would he do that? To keep the conversation about him. To raise his profile above the rest of us. Yeah, right. So... Let's just say I'm as keen as Sigourney is to find out what's really going on so we can rebalance the team. Yeah, I hear you, Penny. Well, while we do that, why don't you take a look at this? Yeah, I think you should get it. You look lovely. I don't think you look fat at all. In fact, I think you look beautiful. There's nothing worse than lying to your lady friend, except maybe telling her the truth. I mean, sure, I think she could lose a couple of extra kilos, but as any bloke knows, I would have got killed for even suggesting it. Well, now, there is a way to get her to shed those extra kilos and you won't even have to mention it. All you need to do is buy your lady friend a dress, something figure-hugging that fits perfectly. And I now know from this one shopping trip that she's a size 12. Now, here's the important thing. Before you give her your very thoughtful gift, all you have to do is remove this size 12 label and replace it with this size 16 label. Then, when she tries the dress on, she'll see that it fits perfectly. But when she sees the size, she'll just assume she's put on weight and immediately start a regime to lose it. She won't care if she thinks that she looks good or feels good. Size is everything. And when it comes to figures, this is the only one she'll care about. Now, not only that, but she'll also score some huge points with her by insisting that she doesn't need to lose any weight because you think she looks beautiful just the way she is. So, take a tip from Todd. If you want your lady friend to make a few minor alterations to herself, simply make some minor alterations to a frock and watch the dress sizes drop. Got your little something just for being you. Oh, Todd, <laughs> you shouldn't have. <laughs> the pleasure's all mine. Funerals are awful. Everyone's always so miserable. And the catering's never as good as at weddings. But the worst thing about funerals is having to do the eulogy. 
If you're actually sad about the person who died, then the last thing you want to do is get up and do the Toastmasters bit. Besides, I don't want to write a speech. It's too much like doing homework. So today, I'm going to show you the easiest way to knock out a eulogy every time. All you need is a big wad of paper. You don't have to write anything on it, but the bigger the wad, the more it looks like you went to a lot of trouble to write your speech. Sigourney will now say a few words about Heidi. Heidi was... She was a great... Heidi was... <laughs> I'm sorry. I don't think I can do this. <sighs> and that's all there is to it. Everyone will have enjoyed that eulogy. They'll be impressed by how much I care and they'll be grateful they didn't have to listen to a long and boring speech. With any luck, I'll find a strong man's shoulder to comfort me in my grief at the wake. Here we go. So next time you need to deliver a eulogy, make it easy on yourself and keep it short, really short. A few crocodile tears is much more impressive than a long oration anyway. Try if you like, but you won't believe it. Here we are concluding another chapter. As good a reason as any to make Goslami. Oh, gee, Sigourney, that sounds exotic. It certainly does. Yeah, but it's not. Ah, uh, Penny, I think you'll find it's quite exotic and a real treat. <laughs> I think you'll find it's a Turkish cheese and spinach pancake, and as far as I'm concerned, it's the Boutoua Big Mac. How so? It's riding the current fashion wave at just about every middle-class market and private school fade around the country. People are so sucked in. Can I have your serve then? Todd, mate, you most certainly can. Now make sure you join us next week for a very special episode. Where we'll provide the prescriptions to all your most popular and persistent problems. And in the meantime, why not treat yourself by not being so hard on yourself? Won't cost you anything. And remember, we're here for you. Good night, Australia. Well, it looks like there's more for the boys. Oh, that's great. Thank you.